I want to talk about a powerful message, a pivotal message, a turning point called my people. I found out that as the Lord led me to begin to talk about this powerful message called my people, I found out the following. I found out that when Jehovah, Jehovah, look, look everybody, when Jehovah looks at humanity, he divides them into two. Where? That when Jehovah looks at the earth, looks at people, he sees two people. He sees one group called my people and another group not his people. My people and the others. And I found out that the manner in which Jehovah speaks about my people is in such a way that there is so much expression of love. Eh? Yeah. That again, that from his throne, when Jehovah looks at humanity, the earth, he sees two, two groups of people. He sees my people and the others. And when you see the way he talks about my people, it's as, it's as if when something happens, he rises, but my people. What? <laughs> He's able to rise up. So let me now explain to you how you are supposed to present it in church. Can you allow me to do that? Yes. That I found out that when Jehovah, the creator of all men, the creator of the universe, that when he looks at humanity, he sees two groups. His own creation. He says, my people and the others. And when you follow very carefully, the way he looks at my people, it's as though he has to rise up from a chair and say, but my people, anyone whose name is written in the book, I will deliver. But my people, if they will repent and turn from evil, I will heal them and Heal the land. I hope I don't pull it. Precious people, today I have a special message to you. Today I am beginning a special message here, a powerful message. And today I want to look at my people. Precious people, I found out that in the Bible, the Lord, Jehovah, the mighty one of Israel, when he looks at humanity, he sees two groups. He sees one group of people, he calls my people. And another group because the others. My people and the other people. And I found out that when the group called my people speaks to Jehovah, it's as though Jehovah wakes up from the sea and says, hey, My people have called me. You understand? He, I found out he's very sensitive to them. And that's why, even when distress comes, he says, but my people, <laughs> he says, but even in the greatest distress, even in the worst distress that has never happened, he rises and says, but my people, I'll deliver. And that's why I say today, 
that as a church, as a congregation, that's why I say today that as a church, as a congregation, as a, as, as a sacred assembly, I want us to find out today when the Lord says, my people, are we really my people? Because my people, we see, loves. And that's why I said, for this church which I pastor, I want to find out today, what does it take for us to be my people? If we are not my people, then what ought we to do to become my people? And my assignment here is very simple today. My assignment here is very simple today. To interrogate us. To investigate us. And find out. Who are we? And also. To raise for you. The features. The character. The identity of the people Jehovah calls my people that we may measure and check. Are we really my people? And if we are not my people, and if we are not even aspiring to be my people, I would walk out. That's the reason I'm here. That this church may also be called my people. And so precious people, today, I want us to begin to examine the character of the people that Jehovah calls my people. Who are these people? What do they look like? What do they do? My people. You find that in every situation, he always branches out and says, but my people, and they shall be my people. And he says, that in every one situation, but if my people, eh? then it's this, huh? eh? Eh? Say, my people, that's why, listen to me people, listen to me somebody, so today, I want to begin an adventure with you. I want to begin a journey with you. I want us to walk. Do you know what an adventure is? An adventure is like an excursion. It's like a journey to a known to discover a treasure. Where? So that's why I said, I want us to begin a journey to begin to discover a treasure called my people. Who are these? And what does it take for us also to be called my people? At the end of this sermon, I want all of you to have appreciated my people. What it means to be called my people. That if there's anybody here that has not been my people, that today you may change. Change and be called my people. Hmm? Hmm? That you may enter. That's why I said. And I said, Daniel chapter 12. I said, my assignment here today. And if I will do this, I will, I will have completed my job. My assignment here today is to bring it to you. That you may appreciate the features. The character. The identity. Personality. Of that which he calls my people. Daniel chapter 12. Verses 1 to verse 6. Once you are there. When you get there. Say amen. He said. At that time. Michael the great prince. Who protects your people. Did somebody hear me? Yes. Did somebody hear me? Yes. Did somebody hear me? As he begins he says. At that time, meaning wakati huo ikifika. When that time arrives, he says, at that time, 
Michael the great prince who protects your people, meaning my people. <laughs> then, then he said, did somebody see that? He, mm -hmm. he said, again, at that time, Michael the great prince who protects your people will arise. He says, he will arise. Meaning, the protector of his people will arise. And he says, there will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. Look at that. Come like this. He said like this. Just listen. Just listen. He says that there will be a distress historic. He says there will be a distress never happened before. For example, if you thought Haiti earthquake was something, 300,000 dead bodies rotting, he says, forget about that, that's a child play. Huh? If you thought the, 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 the Japanese tsunami was something, he said, forget about that, that is a play with little child playing. He's saying that there will be, at that time, at that time, a distress like never ever before. But he says that when that distress will begin to raise its ugly head. Then he says that Michael the great prince who protects his people will arise. Did somebody see what I did? Yes. He goes, the, who protects his people will arise. Dramatic. Arise. As in, what's going on here? Did you understand that? And his job is to what? Protect his people, my people. Remember, he says my people, meaning his people, your people. Huh? What is it? You see, now, now you see, you're walking. He said, huh? What is the meaning of that? Before we continue reading, what is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? And he says, listen somebody, listen to this. He's saying that at that time, when distress begins, there will be divine protection. Hallelujah. He's saying that for his people, my people, there will be, however, divine protection. Where? When the distress just begins, right away, he already cuts out his people. You understand? Who are these people? That's why I'm here today. And let me tell you people, if this church will not aspire to be my people, then I'd rather walk out. My job is to make you his people. So they understand the gravity of it. Hallelujah. And then you come back here. Huh? Let us read on. Let us read on. You're repeating. Huh? <laughs> we have to read. <laughs> Let's read further on. Look at what he says. Hmm? He says, There will be a time of distress such as has never happened from the beginning of nations until then, meaning until now. We all know that the hour is now. His meaning, uh, that is a powerful teacher of the word. Oh, yes. <laughs> no word can escape his fingers. Eh? Every word he touches, he comes out to tell them about it. The deeper meaning. You see? And that's what you ought to be. To teach the word deep. Eh? Eh? And he says, that the distress, then, the, the, then is now. We all know that it is now. He says, but inside there, he has already covered up, but my people. Now listen to what he says. He says, but at that time, your people, did somebody hear me? <laughs> he, says, he says, but at that time, you see what he's saying? He says, but, which means, however, in spite of that, despite that, huh? he says, Regardless, nevertheless, but at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. You 
you see that? To open up. He said, listen to me, people. I have to say this. There are a few things I want to bring your attention to. He says one thing. He says now, I am beginning to open for you the revelation, the unfolding of the identity of the people Jehovah calls my people. He says, he says this. He says, but your people, which means my people, which means his people, everyone whose name will be found written in the book will be delivered. Ah! Did you hear what I just said? I said, ah! He said, Allah! I've just found out something. You, you, see, you see what he's telling them now? I just found out something. I found out that one of the first identity, identity, the feature of my people is that the name must appear in the book. Yes. I? Yes. If you're making notes, that's number one. He said, wow. Now, I came here in the morning and I said, I'm going to talk to you about my people. But now the Lord has helped me. I found out that there is a book. There is a book, somebody. There is a book in which your name must be found for you to be my people. Wow. He said, Listen to me, somebody. I don't know whether you heard what I heard. I am told that there is a book which means there is a list. You're doing hand. He's doing his hand under. There is a list. They must go and check and check and say, uh, Zablon Mwiti. They say Zablon Mwitara. Zablon Mwitere. Zablon, until I call Zablon Mwiti. I say, We got him. We got him. He's my people. <laughs> and that's why I wondered. I said, But who are these people? But now I'm told that there is a book. And in that book, your name must be found written. Hallelujah. He said, church, let me ask you. Allow me. Allow me to ask this. Dancing here every Sunday. Dancing here. Worshipping here every Sunday. Every Sunday, worshipping. Cleaning windows. Putting flowers here. Praying quickly in the morning. Huh? The door is open. Coming in. Coming in. Coming in. And after finishing, going home. Holding children going. But allow me to ask one question. Precious people. In all your practice, in all you do for the Lord, have you bothered to find out whether your name is in the book? What? <laughs> have you really found out? Have you really bothered to ever find out that in your worship, Look, 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 in your worship. He checked, he said, My people, have you ever bothered? Huh? The elders, the men's fellowship, widows meetings, we do it so well and we like it. We like it here. But precious people, I found out that the Lord has raised a benchmark. He has raised a standard. For measuring people. Look. He says. My people. Again this side. Okay. See many people. Mm, I don't find. My people. He has a standard somebody. And I want to find out. In our practice of worship. Do we measure to the standard of God? If we don't. Today is today here. 
We must begin the journey.